Our little planet is absolutely covered with water. 71% of Earth's surface is submerged beneath this life-giving liquid, and most of that water is found in our world's oceans. Historically, these oceans were equal parts mysterious and dangerous. Explorers embarked on long, treacherous journeys to faraway lands to establish trade routes, claim land for their leaders, and just for the bragging rights. You know what I'm saying? Now, thanks to advances in technology, the ocean surface is well known and traveling overseas is no longer a life-threatening, months-long venture. But just below the waves hide the ocean's unfathomable depths. More than 90% of this underwater world remains unexplored. And yet, some of the most incredibly designed, exceptionally beautiful creatures call the ocean their home. Let's take a look at some of these astonishing aquatic animals on today's episode of Creation Connection. Welcome to Creation Connection. I'm Ivana. Before we begin, here's your friendly reminder to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. All right, let's go. The ocean is vast and home to so many living things. Current estimates claim that around 1 million species live in the watery depths. Of course, this includes fish, average and bizarre alike. <laughs> but I'm not really interested in fish today. Instead, let's look at some marine invertebrates. Invertebrates make up more than 90% of the animal kingdom, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Marine invertebrates are designed to survive and thrive in their liquid lodging, and many of them showcase some fascinating features. The chambered nautilus looks like something out of a science fiction movie with its weird tentacles and what passes for eyes. I certainly wouldn't want to meet one in some sort of dark underwater alley. Whoa. Fortunately, these little guys only grow to about eight inches long. But our little friend here has more to offer than odd looks. He's actually the only known cephalopod with an external shell. The shell serves as both the home and mode of transportation for the creature while exhibiting incredible engineering. The shell is full of little chambers, which is where the animal's name comes from. A young nautilus will have around eight chambers, while an adult can have 30 or more. The Nautilus itself lives in the largest chamber and uses the rest to traverse the ocean's depths. The Nautilus lowers and lifts itself by filling and emptying the chambers with water. To swim, the creature expels water, propelling itself backwards to wherever it needs to go. Not only is the shell recognized for its exceptional engineering, but also for its striking beauty. The symmetry of the spiral and the pearlescent interior make the shell a popular novelty. It's often used in jewelry and tourist baubles. Unfortunately, this has led to declining nautilus populations, although conservation efforts have been implemented. The chambered nautilus shows incredible form and function. Okay, to be fair, the term jellyfish is in no way scientifically accurate. They aren't fish. But if I said something like the medusa phase of certain gelatinous members of the subphylum medusazoa of the phylum Nideria, you would probably tune me out. With their umbrella hats and streaming tentacles, these aquatic wonders come in numerous sizes and vibrant colors. While some consider these sea jellies to be simple, they absolutely thrive in their subaquatic sanctuary. Jellyfish are actually about 95% water and lack any sort of blood or brain. Instead, they have three layers, the outer layer called the epidermis and a middle layer of jelly called the mesoglia and an inner layer called the gastrodermis. A system of nerves allows it to respond to external stimuli, though most of that response involves capturing prey or deterring predators with the stinging cells on its tentacles. 
While the majority of these stings will only cause minor discomfort in people, stings from certain types like the lion's mane or the box jellyfish can result in serious injuries or even death. Jellyfish don't actively seek out people to sting. Rather, since they are at the mercy of the ocean's currents, most injuries occur when the waves carry jellyfish close to shore. They can be cooked and eaten, and some parts of the world consider them a delicacy. Yummy. Though I imagine they wouldn't taste very good in a PB&J. Nah. <laughs> Let's hear more about jellyfish from ICR scientist Dr. Frank Sherwin. Well, actually, jellyfish are incredibly well-designed creatures to move in and fill in the aquatic ecosystems. And jellyfish are about 95% water, but that shouldn't be a detraction because that remaining 5% is so amazingly complex. It's true, jellyfish don't have a brain, but they have a nerve net. And this nerve net is a lot more sophisticated than scientists realized. For example, there's a species of box jellyfish in the Indian Ocean that has not one, but perhaps three different sets of eyes. So this is a very interesting conundrum for the evolutionary naturalist who maintains that jellyfish are a product of time and chance and natural processes. So to say that the jellyfish is simple it is simply incorrect. They are very complex creatures. Now jellyfish have always been jellyfish according to the fossil record. People say, wait a minute, if jellyfish are 95% water, what are you doing talking about jellyfish fossils? Well, that's a point we make as creation scientists. To have a jellyfish fossil, a jellyfish that's 95% water, it must be buried very, very rapidly and catastrophically, like you would get with, um, well, perhaps a flood could do something like that. Now, a jellyfish fossil is so well preserved that they can actually compare the jellyfish fossil to jellyfish of today, as we say in biology, extant jellyfish or jellyfish alive today. And so we can say without hesitation that jellyfish have always been jellyfish, but evolutionists maintain they remain unchanged for over a half billion years. From its body structure to its stinging cells, this beautifully efficient creature demonstrates surprising complexity. Moving on to everyone's favorite animal, the slug. Now I know what you're thinking. Slugs? Slugs are boring. All they do is squirm around and leave little slime trails all over everything. But you're thinking of land slugs. Land slugs are boring, but sea slugs? <laughs> sea slugs are cool. Let's talk about The term nudibranch refers to a group of mollusks that lack shells. Many nudibranchs deter predators with their vivid coloration. I mean, look at these guys. Scientists have identified around 3,000 species of nudibranch, but today we're gonna look at a particular group called Aeolid nudibranchs. A number of these creatures possess a very unique skill. Just a little bit ago, we talked about the stinging cells, or nematocysts, of jellyfish. Anemones and corals also use these special cells to ward off predators, but nudibranchs are not to be deterred from partaking of their favorite snack. Instead, they move in for the kill, digesting their prey, usually a sea anemone. They use a coating of chitin in their digestive system to protect themselves from the stinging cells, but then things get kind of weird. The sea slug steals the stinging cells and recycles them into its own body, giving itself a powerful upgrade. Now, if the nudibranch is ever threatened, it can use the hijacked nematocyst to defend itself. Wild. And of course, no discussion on marine invertebrates would be complete without... The octopus has fascinated people for centuries, even so far as to be immortalized in mythology. You've seen them, of course. Most of these eight-armed cephalopods crawl along the ocean floor, hunting their chosen prey, often crustaceans. They produce an inky substance to escape from danger, which sounds like it would be really lame, but it's actually quite an effective defense mechanism. Octopuses have also demonstrated surprising intelligence and problem-solving abilities. But that's not even the most amazing thing about these creatures. 
Some octopuses have cells called chromatophores. Chromatophores contain pigment, which is responsible for an animal's coloration. But an octopus can manipulate these cells to rapidly change its hue to blend in with its surroundings. They are masters of disguise, becoming practically invisible to predators and prey alike. Do you have anything to add, Dr. Sherwin? The octopus is one amazing marine creature. Now, octopus don't have tentacles, that's wrong. They have arms, and usually eight arms. And the octopus is able to get around in its environment using these eight arms in ways that we are only just beginning to understand. But octopus also have a very high concentration of DNA. Now, people have about 22,000 genes, but an octopus has about 33,000 genes. And they can also edit their RNA, their ribonucleic acid, which was only just discovered about eight or 10 years ago. They are intelligent creatures. I would say highly intelligent creatures. When they use octopus in the laboratory, it's the females that live longer than the males, and the females only last, sadly, about three years. But during that time, they begin to recognize the people that work with the octopus in the lab. They also are able to have, as some would say, almost a sense of humor. An octopus with a sense of humor? Well, one researcher took a shrimp, which is the favorite food of the octopus, and held it to the edge of the tank where the octopus was. Well, the octopus immediately recognized, using one of the arms, that this shrimp that the researcher was giving the octopus was in fact tainted. It was beginning to, to rot. So she took the shrimp out of the hand of the researcher and using her eye to stare at the researcher through the tank, unmoving, she jammed that shrimp down into the drain of the tank as if to say, you don't think I'm gonna eat this, do you? <laughs> One of the other interesting things about the octopus is, according to the fossil record, octopus have always been an octopus. Now people say, wait a minute, isn't the octopus just kind of a gelatinous creature? It certainly is. There are no bones in an octopus. And yet we are finding octopus fossils. That almost sounds like an oxymoron. But they have found octopus fossils and they've compared the octopus fossil to octopus today. And not surprisingly, they look just the same. Many marvelous creatures call the ocean their home. These animals are perfectly made to inhabit their environment. Such beauty and complexity provide compelling evidence of a wonderful creator. The book of Genesis tells us that God created sea creatures on the fifth day of the creation week. In the words of the psalmist, those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Thanks for watching Creation Connection. We have new episodes on Wednesdays. An ocean's worth of resources can be found at icr.org. Also, like and subscribe, please. Thanks. Catch us here next week for more Creation Connection. Hey, Ivana. Danger. I was wondering if... Danger. Danger. I'll, uh... I'll come back later.